All right, moving on to topic 5.7 and 5.8 in AP Environmental Science, meat production and overfishing. Okay, so agriculture in the U.S. and in other developed nations, those are our richer nations, transport higher demands for meat. You can see the land required to produce meat. Beef uses the most land. Lamb and mutton, mutton sheep uses the second. Then cheese, milk, pig, poultry, fish, farmed fish, etc., all the way down. Meat production is less efficient than crop production due to higher amounts of water and land to grow the food to feed the meat. All right, so these are our industrial farms, industrial, sorry, uh, feed operations. So let's talk about CAFOs. Down here it is in bold. It's called a concentrated animal feed operation. You can see this with pigs up here. You can see with this with cattle down here. And so we uh, slaughter um, 167 million cows, pigs, and lambs in 2020. And um, that's a lot, but remember there's 330 plus, maybe 340 million people in the US. So if people are eating a lot of meat, this is how much you have to slaughter. Okay, so CAFOs, are also known as factory farms, and they're really to maximize um, productivity and efficiency. Okay, so there's some benefits of CAFOs and some negatives. Our benefits minimize land costs. You don't need as much land if you cram them all together. Improved feeding efficiency. They're all together. They can eat. The food is mainly corn that they eat. Increased food energy through higher body mass. Okay, negatives ethical concerns. It's somewhat cruel, especially to pigs and chickens and things. Um, now on the AP test, you will not at, be asked about the, the ethical, like cruelty to animals stuff. We will mostly focus on the environmental impacts, but it's something that can be um, beneficial to look at the ethics of that if you desire. Okay, um, negatives also, animals are fed grains instead of natural gas grasses. So corn-fed beef, which is most of the time in these CAFOs, they're fed corn, it creates a more fatty, less nutritious beef product than if a cow eats their grasses that they were evolved to eat over time. You also have to use antibiotics. Um, because they're so close together, diseases can spread, so you have to use a lot of antibiotics. You can also have more hormone treatments to increase body mass. Then there's something called a manure lagoon. Let's take a look at that. So manure lagoon is, um, well, you have a picture there. It's just basically the poop that is kind of with water. And um, they store it like that. Now, it can be used as fertilizer, um, but if it, lagoon, if it breaks or fails, it can then flow into a river or stream, it can soak underwater into your groundwater. It can put pathogens, dangerous bacteria. It can put nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus, which is not good in your drinking water as well. And then it can cause eutrophication in um, lakes and streams and rivers, etc. Okay, so how does this produce climate change gases? So cattle, we call it, you know, cow farts, but cattle produce methane. They pass gas. They also release NOx. Um, so does Farming with fertilizer releases nitrogen oxides. We'll learn more about those in Unit 7. And then greenhouse gases, um, CO2 to grow the food and the, fact, the tractors and other farm mechanization and all that stuff. So growing animal feed and transporting animals and meat burns fossil fuels, which releases CO2. Okay. Another concern about a high meat diet is the diversion of corn and soy crops to feed livestock instead of people. So it raises the price of those things um, because there's more competition for those food sources. Now, if we ate at a lower trophic level, you'd end up with more energy available to humans, less land use, etc., because of energy loss. Remember, we learned that in unit one, 90% of energy is lost as it goes up a trophic level. So if you're taking that um, plants and you're feeding it to animals, 90% of those calories, energy calories are lost as heat 
and not stuck to the biomass. Um, so we lose that energy as food. Now energy, of course, is never really lost. It just changes form, but you cannot eat heat. So um, that's why we say it's lost as an energy source to humans to use. Okay, so not all meat comes from CAFOs. You can have free ranging. You can see that for chickens. They also have that for beef and other animals as well. Um, another term is called nomadic grazing, feeding of er herds of animals by moving them to seasonal productive feeding grounds over long distances. Most of the time in the United States, we have free range um, as an alternative to CAFO, which is really the old fashioned way of growing meat um, from decades ago. And it's more nutritious. These chickens that are out here eating bugs and natural plants actually have more nutritious eggs and more nutritious meat. Same thing um, with free range. Now it's more expensive though, so that's a drawback. Okay, if you have cattle growing it, uh, grazing grass in one location for too long, you can have a problem with overgrazing. And then sometimes if you have overgrazing or other agricultural pro problems, it leads to something called desertification. So this is not turning into a desert. This is technically the lowering of productivity of land. So arable here, so it's a transformation, change of arable. Arable means able to be farmed. That's what this word means, the vocab word you need to know. Productive, that means you can grow lots of biomass, food, plants. Low precipitation, which means you need irrigation because you don't have the rain. Um, if it loses productivity, it's called desertification. So the thing to remember is that, yes, some land can turn into a desert, but the word desertification can also just mean a decline in quality, so it can mean both things. Okay, let's talk about eating less meat. So ecologically, which is what we focus on in AP Environmental Science, is that if you eat less meat, then they have to grow less food to feed the animals, which means you have less fertilizer runoff, which means less eutrophication in water, less pesticide toxicity in water or air, etc. Now, as countries go through demographic transition and become more developed, people want eat. So they become wealthier, they can afford the, the meat, and so meat consumption will increase as this continues. Okay, so let's talk about some other problems, including antibiotics that I talked about earlier. So, one of the problems listed in this topic are reduced with free-range grazing animals. So this is a little review. Free-range grazing animals produce less methane. Um, their manure naturally fertilizes the pasture instead of a manure lagoon. And they eat natural gases instead of corn that is grown using fossil fuels. So those are the ecological benefits. Now let's talk about uh, antibiotics. So Antibiotics are used to prevent, so sometimes they, they use them not just to treat a disease, but to prevent diseases because they're so close together. Um, so as antibiotics are used in agriculture to prevent the disease of animals, some bacteria become resistant and the antibiotics become less effective for animals and for humans. Humans also consume antibiotics in the meat that they eat. So you can see by this graphic that 81% of antibiotics in the U.S. are for livestock and only 19% for humans, which can increase the rate of antibiotic resistance. All right, so describe, well, this one is about global desertification. This means, again, a decline in quality. It could be a decline in quality that you end up like making a desert kind of a landscape, or it could be just a decline in quality um, without turning into a desert. That's desertification. So you can see in the United States, in the Western United States, it, this is usually because of less rain. Um, when we have less rain overall and we're degrading the land, this becomes more and more of a problem. And you can see in other parts of the world they have similar problems. Okay, let's talk about overfishing now. So overfishing is occurred because half of our world, almost half, 3 billion people, it's the main protein source. And so as 
population boom in China and India and other places, they need protein, and so most of that's going to come from the ocean because they don't have tons of land for other types of meat like chicken and beef and things like that. And so you can see this is the marine means ocean. And so the red here, most of that is, um, most of that food comes from the ocean. You can see that level is leveled off as aquaculture, which is fish farming, has risen. And then some of it is inland. That means streams, rivers, fresh water in blue. Okay, so wild caught fish are harvested. That fisheries is an economic term for um, uh, when you have commercially harvestable population of fish called a fishery. Over harvesting of these fisheries leads to a fishery collapse where more than 90% of the fish population dies. This graph shows this happening to the Atlantic cod. We had a crash here in the 1970s and it recovered a tiny bit and then it crashed and we have hardly any Atlantic cod left. That was our classic, very, very pronounced um, fishery collapse. This is the Northwestern um, Atlantic Ocean, similar thing. This is a similar graph to what we saw on the last slide. Okay, so here's our current fishing methods that can cause fisheries to collapse. We have long line, drift netting, sonar, purse seam nets, bottom trawl, midwater trawl, gill nets. We'll go over a couple of these that you need to know on the next few slides. Each of these methods are designed to capture very large amounts of fish quickly. Okay, so the first one here is, they're like purse seam. I don't know the details. Oh, this particular graph, sorry. A, B, and C shows how this is. Uh, this works here. Um, this one in E is called long line. They do this for tuna where they have a lot of hooks like this. All right. Um, so some of the problems with these fishing methods is that you get non-target species, which we call bycatch. So that's a word you need to know. So you can see sea turtles. Now sea turtles need to breathe air. And so if they're trapped in fishing line, they suffocate to death because they go up to the surface and they need uh, gulps of air. They have lungs just like um, whales and dolphins need to get air from um, the surface. They don't have gills to get dissolved oxygen from the water. Okay, if you're getting crab here and you accidentally get a shark, that's bycatch, okay? So things you're not, you don't mean to catch, you can't sell, it might be illegal, or animals that get tangled up, that's bycatch. Okay, so some impacts to food webs caused by overfishing. Consumers tend to want fish that are higher on the food chain so we want things like tuna and cod, which eat other fish. And this can impact and increase the populations lower on the food chain. Alternately, if fish stocks are depleted, marine mammals like seals and whales will decrease in population size due to less food for them if humans are eating it all. Some economic impacts of overfishing. Initially, fish will bring more money and jobs, but as fish stocks crash, fisher people will lose jobs and income. So initially, if you overfish, you make more money, then you don't because you've crashed the population. Okay, let's talk about bottom trawling. This is where you can see the picture, you scrape the net along the bottom, but you're also scraping up a whole bunch of things that you can't sell, eat, do anything with, and you've destroyed the habitat. So it's actually this huge amount, 90% bycatch, and most of it is injured so even though you throw back 90% because you you can't sell it, so maybe you're you want some shrimp that are here at the bottom, and you're scraping for for shrimp. Well, you're picking up other things that you can't sell, and then it just goes um, back overboard. But most of the time they die, they're injured. Okay, so how does overfishing relate to tragedy of the commons? Most of the oceans is a commons, and anyone can fish in those locations without rules, limits, or quotas leads to overexploitation. Okay, so how do we address this? We can practice sustainable fishing. We can do laws to protect fisheries by setting maximum catch limits, shortening harvesting seasons, movements by individuals to reduce consumption of fish or to consume only farm fish can reduce these issues. You can pause the video and take a look at these local limits for a lake nearby. All right, this is the last slide here. What I want you to do is to go ahead and pause the video because my timer is gonna run out on this video because I get 15 minutes, so pause it and read it, and make sure you write down the stuff in your notes. 
All right. Have a good one.